Hey guys, this is Josh with the Adept Ape channel, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how to fix a hard starting diesel engine. I get questions about this all the time, and this video is going to be pretty in depth. We're going to be talking about what design features cause diesels in general to be hard starting, especially in the cold, and also what particular issues you need to look for in your engine if it's starting to be hard starting or it has been for a long time and you want to fix it, okay? So let's get into the video. So one of the biggest reasons they're hard starting is their compression ratio, which is the amount of air when your piston's at bottom dead center compared to when it's at top dead center of the stroke in the cylinder. And the compression ratio of a diesel is typically 50 to 100% higher than a gas engine. Gas engines, maybe 9, 10 to 1 compression ratio. Diesels can be 16, 18, maybe 20 to 1 compression ratio. And they require this because, of course, diesels are self-igniting engines. They don't have spark plugs. So they have to take that large amount of air and compress it to heat it up for the diesel to ignite. Now, once the engine started, this is great and high compression ratios make a lot of power. That's why most race engines use higher compression ratios. But when you're trying to start, this is particularly hard on the starting system because the starter is having to push all that air together and create these high compression ratios. If you've ever turned an engine over by hand, a gas engine versus a diesel engine, you'll know that it's much harder to turn over a diesel engine by hand. Number two design reason is, we already discussed this a little bit, no spark plug. Diesels are self-igniting, which means they require the air to be heated in the cylinder to ignite the fuel when it's injected. Now, this is great once the engine's up and running or if you have a warm engine, but if it's a very cold condition and you have a slow turning crankshaft, it's going to be hard to heat that air appropriately for proper combustion. That's why some engines... These engines have glow plugs or they have inlet air heaters. Some of them actually spray fuel into the intake and ignite it just to get that air temperature up. Now, in a spark ignition system, this isn't as important because the air and the fuel are already mixed and you just need a spark. Unlike diesel, you need high cylinder temperatures, which is generated by high cylinder pressures. And the third reason that they are in particular hard starting in general is the heavier components in the engine. We're talking a heavier duty crankshaft a heavy-duty camshaft, we're talking gear-driven valve train, you have a high-flow oil pump typically, a high-flow water pump. Not only that, if the engine's cold and it's been sitting a while, in a particularly a cold condition, the oil viscosity is going to be a lot thicker. You might think, well, gas engines have oil too. Yes, that's true, but in general, most diesels use a 15W40 blend, which is a thicker oil than gas engines, which sometimes use a 0 or 5 or a 10W30 or a 10W40, whatever. And that leads to thicker oil when cold, which means the oil pump is having to work much harder to push the oil through the system. And if the engine's not running, that means the starter is having to push that oil through the system, which is harder on the starter. That's a lot of the reason why diesels have multiple batteries and gasoline engines typically only have one single battery, okay? So those are just some design features that make them harder starting in general. Let's get into some specifics that maybe your particular engine is hard starting and there's a problem with it and you want to fix it. So let's get into that. Okay, so let's get into why your particular engine might be hard starting, if cold or just every time you shut it down. And we're going to look at these in system. So first we'll be looking at the electronics. We're talking your sensors, your wiring, and your ECM. Next we'll talk about the fuel system. Then we'll talk about something that could be causing a cold miss or a miss at cranking and i'm talking about a cylinder or a an engine miss basically that goes away when it's warm then we'll talk about the starter battery cables and battery so your starting system okay we'll talk about those in four different sections so let's get into the electronics first so the electronics of the engine on any electronic control module engine this is basically any diesel engine that's been built in the last 20 years e they are very hard starting if you have a sensor that is reading inaccurately. Now, what do I mean by this? First, you need to verify that there are no codes, or if there is a code, 
it may be tied to why it's hard starting. Do you have, say, a coolant temp sensor fault, oil pressure, anything? You should troubleshoot that first because you need to get rid of any known faults before you start looking for unknown faults. So let's theoretically say you have no check engine lights, no faults when it's running or when it's off or cranking. What you need to do is you need to look at all of your sensors in a status group. We're talking about coolant temp sensors, intake air temp, oil pressure. If it has a fuel pressure sensor, look at the fuel pressure. You need to look at whatever fuel system it has. Does it have a Huey system or a common rail system? What are the pressures there? Are they at the desired levels? Basically, verify all your sensors are reading correctly. Why is this important? Well, your ECM controls the fuel that's injected in each cylinder, and during cranking, it needs to be very precise. A misreading sensor when the engine's hot and running, it might cost you a couple horsepower or cause a slight miss or something, but under cranking, everything needs to be working optimally for it to start smoothly. So if you have, let's say, a coolant temp sensor, and I've changed a lot of coolant temp sensors that weren't coding, but they're reading inaccurately. If they're reading, let's say 50 or 100, uh, not PSI, 100 degrees over or under what the actual temperature of the coolant is, that's gonna change your fuel mapping in the ECM. It's either gonna give it a lot more or a lot less fuel than it should be giving it during cranking. Also, intake air temp, your pressures. The intake and air temps and your coolant temps are easier to verify because if the engine's been sitting overnight, you know what the ambient air temperature is, so you know what those sensors should be reading. Pressures are a little more difficult to troubleshoot because you have no quick way of verifying what they are. If you suspect you have a weird pressure, either fuel or oil or anything like that, you need to put a gauge on the system, particularly your fuel system, if you have a fuel pressure sensor that you suspect is acting up, and verify what that reading is, okay? That is a quick way, if you have a way of communicating with the engine ECM to verify that all your sensors are working and that can definitely be causing a hard starting condition. Okay, so we just talked about fuel pressure sensors. A lot of diesels don't have fuel pressure sensors. So a very good thing to check in every email I get, I always ask, did you check fuel pressure? What's the fuel pressure while cranking? With the engine off, it should be zero after a couple seconds of the engine being off. But while cranking, it should be building fuel pressure and it should be building it rather quickly you need to have a good clean air free constant supply of fuel to those injectors to keep them firing and particularly when the engine is cranking so get a fuel pressure gauge on that system is it building pressure quickly okay let's say it is building pressure quickly but you still think you might have a fuel pressure problem there's other things to check in the fuel system other than just pressure other things are put a sight glass on the inlet to the fuel pump. Is it clear fuel? Are you getting a ton of air? If you're getting air, then you have an issue. This, in particular, is a problem that a running engine will probably run fine if it's getting a lot of air, but maybe a cranking engine will not. You need to verify you're getting a clean supply of fuel. Running it out of a bucket directly into the fuel pump is a good way to verify that as well. Another thing that I've done on a few really hard to figure out engines is I've actually put a vacuum gauge on the inlet to the fuel system. Now, what is this gonna do? This is going to show you how much vacuum that fuel pump is having to create to pull fuel through your fuel water separator, the lines and the tank to get to the fuel pump. It should not be building a lot of vacuum. If it is, that means you have a restriction somewhere before the fuel pump. If you have a restriction, that could be a plug filter. That could be a bent tube or a bent line. If you don't have any vacuum at all, it's, it's not building even one um, inch of water or however your gauge is reading, it's going to show you very low pressure. That could actually indicate you're sucking air because there's not much restriction, which meaning it, it's not having to pull very hard to get any fuel into that pump. If you're getting almost no vacuum, check for air if you're getting a lot. And if that's the case, you need to look for restrictions, okay? Now the next subject is a cold miss or a miss while cranking. A miss is very hard to tell while cranking. It's much easier to tell typically once the engine's running. You might have a lot of smoke, either white, gray, or black. 
you can usually hear it, the engine's running rough, maybe it goes away within a few seconds. You're like, oh, well, it went away, I don't have to worry about it. No, you should worry about that because that miss is probably causing the hard starting condition. Now, this is particularly common on Huey engines. They will have either a miss that goes away within a few seconds or maybe a minute of starting up, and after that, the engine runs fine. And every time they shut it down and leave it overnight, hard starting again. It's hard to troubleshoot because if you're doing an automatic cylinder cutout test, you can't do that while the engine's cold. Usually the engine needs to be at operating temperature, about 170 degrees before you can do a cutout test. So what I tell people, if they have access to it, let's say you have a C7. Cold starting is hard and you fired it up. You can tell you have a miss right away. Do a manual cutout test. You can manually in ET cut out individual cylinders by themselves. If you find a dead cylinder that's always missing when cold, or even intermittently doing that, replace the injector in that, or find out why it's doing that. Usually it's an injector. Mechanical faults don't typically get better as the engine warms up. So that is a very common failure point for Huey engines. And it, of course, can happen on other types of engines, but it seems to be more likely on Huey engines. So if you have a miss or a rough running engine, figure out why it's running rough when cold or cranking. That'll usually take care of your hard starting condition. And the last one, and probably the simplest, is it's hard starting, but the engine is cranking slowly. Now, there could be a lot of reasons for this. If you do have an engine that's cranking very slowly, first thing to do is, if you can, try to rotate the engine with some sort of turning tool to make sure nothing mechanically is binding up while cranking. But typically on a slower cranking engine, you either have older batteries or a battery that's bad i recommend testing all the batteries individually not as a group to determine if you have a bad battery a lot of the things as well if it's slow cranking the wiring the wiring between the batteries and the starter particularly i've found a lot of slow cranking engines even after people replace starters because the ground terminal or the power terminal to the starter, the nuts loose or the cables are not touching appropriately and they're not making good contact. If that's happening, you need to make sure you have good power and good ground of that starter or else it's not going to work properly. It draws a lot of current, hundreds of amps while cranking, and you need to make sure it has good contact points there. I've also, in the past, to test this theory, if you're checking for, let's say, just a bad wire or something, you can do what they call voltage drop tests, but a quick way to get around that is to get some jumper cables, put them on the battery terminals, and then connect them to the starter terminals. If you just bypass, not bypass, but parallel over, still using your other wiring with some jumper cables, it'll give it alternate sources for the current to flow. If it starts cranking much faster immediately, you know you have bad contacts or bad wiring between the batteries and the starter, and it's not the starter or the batteries by themselves. Now, those were all kind of general things to check for on all diesel engines, but let's talk in particular about Huey engines. This would be at least ones I'm extremely familiar with, 3126s, C7s, and C9s. I get emails a lot on these in particular for hard starting because the Huey engines in general are the hardest starting, even when they're working properly. What are some of the major things to check for? Cold misses. They develop cold misses more than any other engines I've worked on. C15, C13, C12s, 3406s, whatever. They, for some reason, that Huey injector and the oil being cold causes a lot more hard misses. That's one thing to check in particular for a Huey engine. Not only that, your Huey system is not great when it's cold. The oil's thick, it's trying to pump very high pressures to the head and the injectors, and a couple things usually happen. Either you have a leak in one of the injector seals that's leaking oil, maybe not a lot, but a little bit, and that's causing it to build less Huey pressure than desired. That, you need to pull the valve cover, you need to look for oil leaks around the injector seal. Now, these purge a lot of oil normally, so it can be hard to tell, but I've caught a lot of hard starting ones because of injector oil leaks. That's one thing to check. The other one is your injection actuation pressure sensor. It can be off 
by a few hundred PSI, and while the engine's running, it doesn't matter because it's running, you know, anywhere from 1,400, 3,000 PSI. So a couple hundred PSI might not make a difference. But at cranking, it needs about seven to 800 PSI minimum for it to fire. And if the ECM sees that it's getting that, it's going to pull back on the Huey current to the pump. So you need to put a gauge on that system, a properly rated high pressure gauge, to make sure that that sensor is reading accurately. I've seen a few IAP sensors cause hard starting or no starting because they're not reading accurately. And one other thing, and we already talked about sensors, is check your timing sensors. I don't know how many times we've had intermittent or hard starting conditions because one of the timing sensors is bad. And once the engine starts, it'll read the other one. But during cranking, it really likes to see both. So check those as well. I have a video in particular on checking your timing sensors. That's my video for the day. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Thanks for watching.